Hey guys, welcome to Dog Life. I'm Kim Pachotti. And I'm Christina Borders. And we welcome you this week. And we're actually gonna go on a really big topic this week, and that's nutrition. Uh, there's so much out there and there's so much to learn. Mm -hmm. um, we wanna simplify it for you the best we can. Nutritional is very individual, not only for people, but for dogs. However, it's really, really daunting. Yeah, it can be very confusing. It is, and there's so much trending right now and so much as far as people cooking for their dogs and all these new uh, places opening up and I, it's very, very hard to know what to, what, to know. What, what do I feed my dog? Exactly, right. so we're gonna touch a little bit upon that. Um, what else are we gonna do? We are going to talk a little bit about plants. Yes, that's right, that's right. Uh, planting season is coming, Yep. So, or here, I should say, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to go and we're going to talk about some the different kind of vessels you can feed your dog in. Mm -hmm. There's what a, material is best. That's right. Yep. And then, of course, our funny canine comics. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so right now, why don't we just jump right in because we have a lot to go over this week. Uh, let's just jump into the first up, and we're going to get a little bit of the, about the basics of nutrition from this, kind of very simple, like I said, we're trying to keep this as simple as we can for you, so it's easy to remember, because mm -hmm. I have a hard time remembering things, the older you get, that happens. Um, <laughs> but let's go see what it says. Yeah. How do we make sense of what is the best food and nutrition for our dogs? There's so many choices, so much hype, so many recalls, and even the people who specialize in canine nutrition often don't agree. It is up to us responsible pet owners to do what we can to learn about our dog's individual nutritional requirements. Whether you feed your dog a commercial kibble, prepare homemade meals, or feed raw, it is important to understand the fundamentals of canine nutrition. Research amongst the pet industry has shown that many people are now trending to cooking for their dogs. This is one reason why it's very important to learn about some specific differences from their nutrition to ours. Both humans and dogs fall under six major classes of nutrients. First, what are considered macronutrients are your proteins, fat, and carbohydrates. Then there's micronutrients. Those are the vitamins, minerals, and water. Proteins are the complex molecule made up of amino acids, and they're the building blocks of all cell growth, maintenance, and repair. Fats provide the most concentrated source of energy in the dog's diet. You see, dogs are lucky in that approximately 90 to 95% of the fat they eat gets metabolized. Unlike humans, dogs don't need carbohydrates because their bodies can get energy from protein and fats alone. However, when they consume carbs, it can be broken down by the digestive system and converted to glucose, which is another source of energy. Carbohydrates in the form of whole grains can furnish iron, minerals, and fiber as many other beneficial nutrients. Did you know that your dogs produce their own vitamin C? Humans rely on our food and supplementation for vitamin C, but dogs can take care of it themselves. Vitamins are also important in the conversion of calories into energy. Minerals are inorganic nutrients that make up less than 1% of the dog's body weight that are essential to many important functions such as growth, strong bones, and teeth. Dog food, I mean, it's, just overwhelming. I'm overwhelmed and I know a little bit about it. I can imagine the average person who doesn't know and they come into the store and they often rely on the help of the people that work here um, to be able to tell them what's best for their dog. But what we've learned is every dog is individual. So this may be good for your dog, but this isn't for someone else's. So we're going to try to put a little bit of sense to this, but to me this is just overwhelming. As we go through the store, there's four aisles. We have one, two, three and four aisles of dog food. How, how are we supposed to know what's good and what isn't for our dogs? Well, let's head back to the studio and let's see if we can decipher a bag and learn a little bit more so maybe it'll make your next trip to the store a little bit easier. I don't know about you, but that's a lot to know. Yeah, it's overwhelming. Well, I mean, there's just so many choices and so many things to choose from. It's like, I mean, my son had asked me a couple weeks ago or whatever, he's like, you know, he wanted to switch up Brutus's food and he's like, what do I get? And I'm like, there's, there's a lot to know and a lot to figure out. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, what we want to do is we want you to just kind of follow some basic, we're going to give you five or six different tips that you can kind of figure out, help kind of put things a little bit more in perspective. So you're a little bit more knowledgeable. Um, about being able to choose that best food for your dog and you're not so overwhelmed and falling into, you know, this food industry is very much hype. 
Yes. So that's really where a lot of it's kind of coming from. So the first thing that we want you to look at is the front of the bed. Don't get all into all the fancy as far as all the pictures of the food. But it looks so good. I know. But just remember that this is human grade food. And unless this bag says human grade right. food, it's animal grade food. It doesn't look like this no. at all. The other thing is they can put on here, um, for example, they may have a big pile of blueberries or a big pile of something. You're thinking, oh, that food is all filled with it. Mm -mm. Very first, not the first ingredient like a lot of people tell you to do. It's the first couple ingredients. And there's a very big difference between chicken and chicken meal. Now, meal sounds like it's pretty gross yeah yeah and if, when i look at the bag and, and i even thought this myself mm -hmm. uh chicken meal oh my god that sounds like it's yeah, just like just pieces parts of disgusting whatever ground up chicken yeah but it's actually the better of the two the reason is is because when they, the ingredients i'm going to take a step back because i don't want to confuse you ingredients on the label is listed in weight first mm -hmm. so the thing, the item that weighs the most is the very first ingredient. So we all think meat weighs the most, correct? So when I think of chicken, I think of a whole chicken. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what it is. But before it can go into the bag and into the extruder, it's got to be cooked. Now that chicken, which was a maybe a 10-pound chicken, now has turned to a 5-pound chicken because all the moisture is taken out. Now with chicken meal or whatever meal product that is, they dehydrate it first and then they weigh it. So now all that moisture is taken out of the, the ingredient. So uh, one whole chicken could weigh 10 pounds, but a big stack of chicken meal that could look like double the size could still weigh 10 pounds. It's very much, it's volume and weight. Right, and it's a more concentrated exactly. protein. It's a definitely, you're getting much more protein out of a chicken meal than you are out of a whole chicken. So that is a big, huge mm -hmm. agreement, mm -hmm. or a big thing to choose from. Also, you want to check the second and third and even the fourth ingredient and what they are because if they're carbs, they, that's, once again, it's one of those weighing different. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, I used to always say with the kids with the baking and so forth, you know, a five-pound bag of flour weighs totally different than five pounds of water or uh, eggs. You like you weigh your eggs when you're baking. So everything has a, the way that they weigh different based on the volume capacity of the item. So, for example, in this food here, which is a, a well-known food, the first ingredient is chicken. Next is brewer's rice, corn gluten meal, whole grain corn, and poultry byproduct meal. I don't even know what half the stuff is. Yeah. Well, first of all, we know corn is an issue. Yes. Okay, and corn is an issue because, what is it, over 90% of the corn in the United States is genetically modified. <laughs> and what's an easy way for them to understand um, that? Genetically modified means that it's been engineered in a lab to be able to withstand environmental pressures and um, most herbicides that are used right. and uh, insecticides to keep the bugs off of. Which are known carcinogens such yes. as Roundup. Roundup. Okay, so those are the items that you want to look. For example, this bag says its first ingredients are deboned beef, lamb meal, sweet potatoes, peas, potatoes, uh, then it goes into a pea protein, so forth. This bag says, uh, let's see, chicken meal, whole eggs, dried turkey meal, uh, cassava, and tapioca. Um, which I'm assuming that that is like, almost like I don't know, that's like, like a flour, thickener, flour, starchy, something, something like that, which would be a starch, okay? Which takes us into another thing that you want to look for, which are the sugars in the food. And it's very easy to do that because all you do is you're going to go to the side of your bag on your guaranteed analysis, and you are going to see it's going to list protein, fat, fiber, moisture, and a lot of bags they don't put the ash on the side. I'm not really quite sure why. Mm -hmm. Some bags do, some bags don't. So the average kind of is about 6% as far as ash. So in looking at this bag right here, it has 38% protein, 15% fat, so that would be 53. Uh, it has three and a half crude flour, so let's just say four. Uh, so that's 57. It has 11% moisture, so that's 67, 68. And then if we add in our six, it would be 74, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? 68 and six, 74. Yes, yeah, right. So what that's telling us is this whole bag, which means that, that would be 26% sugar. 
of a 25 pound bag. That's not much. A lot of, that's a lot. But there's some of them that we did that were over 50%. Look, I gotta get the pool. I'm trying to move this because I need it to be over here. I'm building a fort. I'm building a fort. Come on, you gotta help me. Why is it? Because I'm making a fort. That's why. I need. Look, all these dudes are like invading my personal space and I'm trying to make a fort. This is my moat so they can't get in. That, see? See, it's working. They're not, they're not coming in now. It's working, this is perfect. I'm so smart, I'm so smart. Look at, look at this. It's doing its job. Well, wow, I'm a genius. Oh, no, no, you're not supposed to go in there. No, that's not why I did that. That's a moat. You're not supposed to do that. Come on, man. They have what they call a 95, 25, and 3% rule. And what that means is, for example, this bag here says, recipe. This bag here says formula. Uh, I believe it's dinner, nuggets, those types of things. That means 25% of this bag has to be that first ingredient or whatever they're saying. So the protein, is, then this one would be beef. So they're saying that this bag would have to have at least 25% beef. Now putting that into perspective, that's once again raw weight. And 25% of a 25 pound bag is only six and a quarter pounds before it's cooked. Yeah, that's true. And before, it, well, we all know that the moisture content when you cook food at least goes down 50%. So that means basically three pounds maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of beef in a 25 pound bag. What else is the rest? Yeah. That's where it's kind of different. The 95% rule means 95% it, of it would have to be real food, which if it just says chicken dog food or beef dog food, um, then you know 95. Mm -hmm. um, if it says with, uh, you know, beef with chicken or something, you or, know, or, or, or whatever. Puppy some, food with chicken. Exactly, or there you yeah. go. Um, dog food with beef or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The width is only 3%, which is very misleading. I That's think. point. Yeah. 0.03 of a 25 pound bag. That's not even a pound of meat in here. And if it says flavor, it doesn't even have to be meat. So those are some of the things on the front of the bag. Have you ever wondered what the best type of material for your dog's bowl is? Well, there was a study done in the UK where they tested the three different types of commonly used materials, plastic, stainless steel and ceramic. And what they found was, not surprising, plastic harbors the most bacteria and colonizes the most different types of bacteria. Um, it's kind of a tie between ceramic and the stainless. The, sta the ceramic is good, uh, but you have to be very careful with that because of where it could possibly be made. They may not have the regulations in place to prevent lead in the glazes and things like that. Um, so locally made, you know, go on Etsy if you want ceramic. Uh, but really and truly, Stainless steel is your best bet. Um, it's dishwasher safe for one thing. You're not gonna get the cr cracks and the chips in it that uh, you would with ceramic. And overall, it is your best choice. So now you know. Another thing on the back of the bag is the salt factor. And what the AFCO says, which is they are the governing agent for all the dog food. And what that means is there cannot be any more than 1% of salt in any type of dog food. So that tells us when they say that their rules are the highest ingredient in weight has to be listed first all the way down to the lowest. So if we find salt, for example, on this bag, salt is about, I'd say maybe about halfway in or maybe about a quarter, quarter of the way in. The way. Mm -hmm. But the two items that are after that are apples and blueberries. So that may mean there may be one blueberry in this whole bag, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. only one blueberry. But they can have it and you think this is great and we're getting this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's very, it's very, very misleading. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that you're going to find in some of the other things that we found is, like we said, a lot with the corn. Yes. But there's a product called Animal Digest. Oh, yes. And I had Christina, I want Christina to read this to you guys. What actually is Animal Digest it's, and what's in here? It's, it's very concerning, I think. Well, I do too as well. Um, yeah. 
it, it just let her, just listen yes. to what Animal Digest is. Well, it's one, in the food. It says one expert has described Animal Digest as a cooked down broth which can be made from unspecified parts of unspecified animals. The animals can be collected from almost any source. There's no control set in place over quality or contamination. Any kind of animal can be included, um, what they call 4D animals, dead, diseased, disabled, or dying before slaughter. Roadkill, guys. Um, yeah, or animals euthanized at animal shelters. So these, this tissue could contain phenobarbital, you know, things like that in it that you just don't want your dog to inject. Well, wasn't there, um, I believe it was Avengers, just recently had got not recently but just a little while back had gotten recalled because in their canned dog food they found using the use of the peanut butter yeah. oh gosh i didn't realize yeah that. so there's a lot and that's another thing check the recalls check and find out be your dog's advocate guys mm -hmm. because it really it's little simple things like that that can kind of help you gear you maybe you get, gather it down to five or ten foods that you think okay these will work for my dogs you know check it out but so much of what the companies do are marketing another thing christina and i noticed actually just earlier they have when you measure protein in the dog food because of the fact that it's basically a kibble it's just made like from extrusion machine just like they make cereal mm -hmm. so what that is is they have to take the food the raw food they heat it up to very very high temperatures almost sometimes over 300 degrees and then the extruder machine processes out the kibble that's mm -hmm. what makes it um, so it's one of those things where I just totally lost my train of thought where was I going with this what was I talking about talk about the actual Oh, protein, protein. thank you. Versus. Oh my gosh. I was, I was like on a roll and I lost it there. <laughs> anyway, see it happens to the best of us. Anyway, on the back of this bag, it says that it contains, get this, real deboned Texas beef is our number one ingredient with 38% protein in every bowl. Now I'm thinking, oh wow, my dog's got great amount of protein in that. But when you convert this to dry matter, mm -hmm. you find out really what you do to, find, to convert to dry matter is you take 100 minus the moisture content in this bag, which the moisture content was 11%. Uh, 11 so we said 89% of 38% is only 33% protein. So the back of the bag says they've got 38% because it's crude protein, mm -hmm. but it's not real protein, real protein because it's not done in the way that we're used to. We assume that that's what it means. Which, why don't they just... Put I things. don't know. I mean, right. It's not very transparent no. when dog food companies don't, uh, when they, yeah. It's, well, and the rules that make it so they can uh, well, that's list what it things is. that way. That's why, that's why you kind of feel like it's hard. Who do you trust? Mm -hmm. How, who do you trust with? I mean, our dogs rely on us, you know, to feed them. And, and it's so where it's, you know, with the cancer and all the different things and the arthritis and the obesity. And, you know, that's another thing, the calories. Um, Find out your dog's calories. Right, right. What is your, your dog required? There's a, a lot of places on the internet that you can go into a dog calculator, put in your dog's weight, put in, um, we've even made one up that we'll put on the website, uh, where you can go in, you can take their activity level, determine how many calories. Each one of these different bags. Right, and it's much better to go by that calorie count yes. than that feeding uh, amount, quantity that they suggest because isn't it... Um, when they test foods to decide what the right. quantity should be, that's all done on, on beagles. beagles. Exactly, so exactly. If you so, have a chihuahua or a mastiff, you, you know. Exactly, so it's very, very different. Don't ever follow the recommendation of the, the feeding the, recommendation. Of the feeding recommendation on the bag. You need to figure it out for your own dog. Uh, like I said, you have to take what calorie count. It's just like a person. Mm -hmm. How many calories do you need today to survive? Mm -hmm. What are you having? What type you're doing? And feed your dog according to right. that because and don't forget to count in the treats and give yourself some yeah. factor that way you know we all like to give those extra treats and in tables but that adds yeah. up over time yeah it does yes. add up just like it does with people that yeah. extra, and a lot of times glass they're, of wine. They're, <laughs> those treats are, are much higher in, in calorie count than exactly than the food can exactly be. so you really kind of have to watch all the way around out like i said we didn't want to go into too much detail and bore you but we hope you those remember the factors what's on the front of the bag as far as formula with recipe know your content uh, worry about the first four ingredients mm -hmm. look at your salt factor look at your sugar factor know your calories for your dogs and last one I forgot to say the dyes oh yes the dyes that is a huge one in a lot of grocery store purchase food uh, the red dye yellow five and yellow six mm. 
known carcinogens, yeah. guys, they cause cancer. Mm -hmm. They're only in there to make it look like it's real chicken or it's real vegetables or whatever it may be. It's all marketing. Right, right. You wouldn't give your kids a lot of, you know, that's a no. big deal these days. No artificial exactly. colors or dyes. Yeah. Exactly. And so. that dyes cause cancer in animals. It's proven. Mm -hmm. It's proven. It's, it, it's all that it, there is to it. Mm -hmm. So... Stay away from that. Yeah. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to go make some probiotics. <laughs> Lord knows what's in that jar. <laughs> <laughs> Just <think. laughs> Let's go to the kitchen, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome to the kitchen. What better thing to work on today than a probiotic, which is very whole food and natural, and we're going to ferment some vegetables. It's great for, for the dogs. It's great for us. And the... Probiotic activities and bacteria are much, much higher in this than even some of the ones that you can buy and supplements that you can do. So what is great is this will save some costs. Anybody can do it at leftover vegetables in the garden, in the yard, all your tastes. So I'm going to go through it real quickly to show you how simple it is to do. I made this jar a little bit earlier. All I did was get a mason jar, pint size, packed it with the vegetables I wanted. I used asparagus, carrots, and some red peppers. Then I took two cups of bottled water or filtered water. I, and then I dissolved in that water a half a tablespoon of sea salt. Remember, sea salt's good for dogs, safe for dogs. Poured it over top of all my vegetables. And then I took a ceramic weight and put it on top because I wanted, we need to make sure that all the vegetables are submerged under the water because this way that will make it so you don't have mold growing or anything else like that in there. Sealed it all up. And we're just going to let it sit on the counter at room temperature for a couple days. This one had already sat since about four or five days ago. So you can see the asparagus perfect as far as crispiness. It's almost like you've grilled it. It's got a very, very good, great, good flavor. The peppers turned a little bit softer, which is great for our older dogs. But you wonder why we need probiotics? It aids their digestion, detoxifies their system, and builds their immune system, which is very, very important because a lot of our dogs ailments come from their gut. It also helps with allergies, which we all know that our dogs are constantly biting and itching and chewing and all that kind of stuff. And, and we don't need to go to drugs all the time. So there's a lot of different natural ways that you can do things. So this is super, super easy. But in order to enhance it even more is prebiotics. See, if you put prebiotics before probiotics, it equals symbiotics. And you're like, oh my goodness, what do I do now? this right here. Simple apple. You can give your dog a piece of an apple, give them a little of this, the two mix together and the probiotics actually feed off of your prebiotics. Another prebiotic, if your dog doesn't like apples, are mushrooms. Shiitake are even better for them, the greatest ones, along with bananas. Even a little small amount of garlic. You're thinking, oh dogs can't have garlic. Yes they can and we'll talk about that in another episode. But very easy, fermented veg guys. Go home and make some. As the number of kids per household declines, the number of pets are increasing. Many of those pets are living the life of luxury as people are treating the dogs as their human. So it shouldn't seem too much of a surprise that dogs are now actually have their own food trucks hitting the streets. As our pups are going more places with us, food truck owners are targeting urban areas in their dog parks, farmers markets, breweries, and festivals. Many of us have memories enjoying that special treat from the ice cream truck and now more and more pet parents are reliving that same feeling with their pups. Starting in May of 2011, Fido to Go was the first and original dog and cat treat food truck in the nation. You will find their two trucks on the streets of Chicago serving handmade specialty cookies and frozen yogurts. 
Products are made by owner Donna Santucci and her team in full culinary kitchen with only the finest USA ingredients. Donna's customers, both human and canine, appreciate that she uses all human grade products that are organic and natural and that she even tastes her treats. To get the current whereabouts of the Fido To Go truck, visit Donna's website at FidoToGo.net. Even if you're not in Chicago, there's an online shop so that you can share with your dog Fido To Go homemade treats. If you're in Pittsburgh, keep your eyes open for the Rollaway Dog Cafe. Started by three friends who run a specialty pet businesses, the Rollaway Dog Cafe has a different approach for a food truck. They have a pop-up store which carries treats, chewables, and unique pet products that are healthy and safe for your animal. There is a nutritional reason for every item they sell in their cart. They share the belief that food is medicine and a lot of your animal's health problems can be solved through diet. Specializing in treats, your dog can come to the window to order and eat them right on the spot. You can learn more about their whereabouts from their website, rollawaydogcafe.com. So check your local city for a dog food truck. If you can't find one, then if you say you're the entrepreneurial type, maybe just start one up because it looks like they're here to stay. We all know that poinsettia plants are poisonous to the dogs at Christmas, but did you know that there's some spring and summer plants that are as well? Begonias, a one that's very, very much used as people to put in annuals every year. Uh, I'm from the north and we used to always, impatience went in the, in the shady part, begonias went in the sunny part. And those were very, very common plants, but they're toxic to the dogs if they eat them. Along with our beautiful blooming azaleas that come out in the springtime and usually are like down here in the south, they're usually out all year long, not the flowered part, but they can still get the branches and still get the, the, the leaves which are toxic to them, along with the boxwood plant, which is another very common one that you'll find in people's yards. So just make sure if your dogs are outside playing, make sure they're not being able to have access to that. So now you know. Don't forget guys, dog life is for you and about you and we want to see your pictures and videos. So go to the website doglife.tv and submit your photos and your videos. There's a link right there with, you can click on it and it'll email it straight to us and we want to feature your dogs on the program. So send them in, we want to see you. Welcome back guys. Well, I hope you've learned a lot this week. I know we have, huh? Yes, a lot. Did you did you learn that veggies aren't bad? I like I like veggies, fermented veggies. Well, I don't know. It's really no. It's it really it's a great probiotic and yeah, and it's whole food. You're not getting some combobulation of stuff. So. Well, that that's always better for everybody, right? But guess what next week is? Do you know what next week show is about? Puppies, guys. We're gonna bring you overloads of cuteness. <laughs> so I think you're gonna love it. We've got lots to share since we're kind of puppy experts. So we've got a brand new litter. Um, they're just a little baby, so we're gonna introduce them to you. Kind of meet everybody. They're get your so favorite. Cute. Yeah, they are cute. They are cute. But really, we hope that you enjoyed this week's show. Please pay attention to what you feed your dog because it, it really is true. You are what you eat. Yep. And it goes for them as well. So. Have a great week. Send us the videos, please, guys. Don't forget, doglife.tv. You got it. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>